Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Uh, let's try to do my intro real quick. Real quick, quick. Yes, welcome to my channel. I post about my life journey, like literally, seriously, we are on a journey to just living a wonderful, fabulous life. And my mental health is a big part of that. So I share about my mental health, but also I share about things that I just, that just, I had to, I have to talk about like, and, um, so I would say if you're going to subscribe, subscribe because you like me subscribe because you vibe with me because I talk about different things all the time and I know it's, it's really starting to look like I just make really one type of video, but I, I, I am experimenting with things and ideas. Okay. I have to talk about this. Um, I saw this thumbnail. It said, I understand R. Kelly. I was like, what do you mean you understand R. Kelly? Who said that? Who the hell? Who thinks like that? And I I watch I haven't even finished watching this video. Um, we're not gonna watch the entire thing together, but we'll watch important moments. This is a big trigger warning. This is a big this is a mega mega trigger warning. Um this disgusted me. This is a black YouTuber. Um, I think it's really only a black. YouTube creators that are talking about this dude and black TikTok creators talking about this dude. Um, it's not going to get play. Like you're not going to, you're not going to see about this on your T channel or your commentary channel. You're not, you're not. But you're going to hear it from me. This content creator, her name is most of Mireille subscribe to her um check her out most of Mireille you probably won't see my video but if you ever do shout outs to you girl thank you for making this content and bringing it to my attention because this is disgusting um I wanted to speak on it because I just feel like it needs more play I just feel like it needs more play I know I'm a small creator but Shoot, like, if I can add, just add to the inventory of videos that exist, denouncing this behavior and thought process, I, I will. <sighs> this is about grooming, underage, sexual activities, coercion, parents coer coercing, coercing their children and this is really gross. So if you're eating or if you, if you, I would hold off on any bodily functions that you are in the midst of while listening to this. Cause it's just so gross. I, I contemplated not even making this video because I just didn't want to listen to it again. But I was like, no, this video needs to be made. Um, okay. So y'all are like, okay, what is it? What is it? Uh, we'll, we'll just start playing. Let's just, just start playing the video. I understand R. Kelly on a deeper level. Personally, don't think there's anything wrong with older guys liking younger girls. Because at the time he was with Aaliyah, I think he was 21 and she was 16. To me, that's not a really big difference. And they were stuffing her palms with cash. How is she a victim? When you stick your... He asked, how is she a victim? Because they paid her money? for being R. Kelly's bride. How is she a victim? When you stick your dick in some pussy that ain't never had a dick in it before? Woo! It's so tight, it's so warm, it's so snug. 
girl, there's more. <sighs> follow her, follow her. Oh, this is cute. I should do that on my channel. That's cute. That's cute. First commenter, first comment hey, winner. Hey, this is Marie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, okay, number one, I'm sorry about this ring light and the flash in my eyes. I can't do anything about Glendon Cameron. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Glendon Cameron is really overall, let's just say a business, business man. He's been creating content for a long time and his channel is known, let me see, hold up, because his current channel, some people might know him as a corporate citizen and apparently he's somewhat known within the manosphere and that's one of the main people or main group that I've been hearing talk about this. We're gonna get into- I, somebody has asked me about my thoughts on the manosphere. And what I find interesting is whenever I talk about things related to black women, just just if I'm talking about black women, I'm I don't get black women who watch those videos. I get men. I get men who watch my videos about black women. Um and they ask me the most ridiculous questions. Um it's really annoying. It's this manosphere later. thing. And with hold it. on, hold on. Somebody asked me, what are my thoughts on the manosphere? This manosphere thing is like, I think it's cool. Great. Like, I don't care. Like men talk about men's stuff, but there, there is some bullshit. There is some nasty bullshit that goes on in that manosphere. Just let's just let's just keep watching. This content, child, it's a mess. Really, what happened with Linda is recently he came onto social media and admitted to basically being a and exploiting young children. Here's the first clip. All I had to do was just show up. And they would service me. I remember one Sunday, I f all three of them, I f the mom, I f the daughters, and the youngest one was really, really f***ing tight. And their mom was like, yeah, we got to open up that. And I mean, I was just sitting there f***ing her. And their mom was like, yeah, that's it. Take that. Take that. And in the beginning, both of the girls were virgin. I took their virginity. And the young one, in the beginning, it used to hurt her. And she was like, it hurts, mom. It hurts. That's such a big, it hurts. And then after a few times, and I loosened up that p***y, then she started getting into it. Yo, you see why you see trigger big trigger warning, yo. To this day, this girl is a bona fide black cock slut freak. Whoever she's fucking right now is very He's saying that like that's a good thing. He doesn't know that that's a trauma response. That's a that is literally a trauma response. Happy. I don't believe R. Kelly's a I think he has an appetite that got him in trouble. And I forget the billionaire who was running the trafficking. Uh, I forget his name. I can see him. He was a blonde, white guy. Yeah. That's crazy because you give his vibes. It's crazy you don't know your mentor's name. That same appetite. Now, I, this that young girl, 17-year-old, the mom and her daughters, I did not look or hunt or subscribe to those young girls. I'm here to guy, I'm here to tell you, especially with the billionaire, these girls would go out and recruit girls and they were adults. They that's not good. That's, that is why Jeffrey Epstein's female recruiter is also in trouble. That's not okay. And the situation you just described sounded like a mother making her daughters go with you. Watch, he's going to start conflating. This is the problem. He, what he described, and then what he's going to start describing are two are two separate things. And he's going to say, "I don't see anything wrong if if women are coming to me. I don't see anything wrong with it." But that's not the situation you just described. You're trying to lump it all together like it's the same thing. Like th these dudes are so confused as to even what's going on. It's like the only thing they care about is getting their D wet. 
it's like they don't even they don't even recognize women as human beings. They were 100% aware of what they're doing and they were stuffing her palms with cash. How is she a victim? How is he a, I could be considered a brother because I've had a lot of. He sent, because he sent people to recruit and incentivized people to recruit more victims. The hell? Sex with a lot of women. I could be considered a womanizer because I like slinging the dick. I never had. You're, you would be considered a womanizer because, <laughs> because you are womanizing. You can sling the D and not be a womanizer. Had anyone go out and find girls for me. Never did that. I did all my own work. And this is one of the reasons I never. The, the, how does that, you did you have the work yourself. That's like, he's saying like that, like that's a good thing. Dude, I, I'm just so baffled. Got in trouble. I understand R. Kelly on a deeper level. Did he commit these crimes? I would say, yes, he had sex with young women. I would say these young women were complicit. They were willing because he was R. Kelly. It it's like you don't even know what he was charged with. It's like you just missed the part where he was found guilty of false imprisonment. When somebody, <laughs> if you're found guilty of false imprisonment, that does, that, that means that the people were not complicit and were not consenting. It is not that hard for an older man to get a very young girl. It's not that hard at all. There are many girls out there who are looking for older men, looking, searching, hunting for older men. And they're 14, 15, 16. And okay, you leave them alone. <laughs> Like, that's also not that hard. Leave them alone. And they have no problem taking it from a 25, 35, or even a 45 year old man. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with older guys liking younger girls. Because at the time he was with Aaliyah, I think he was 21 and she was 16. To me, that's not a really big difference. Like, So in case you didn't read the screen, Aaliyah was 15, R. Kelly was 27. Like there was this one girl. I did a, my research on her. Like, it's like he mentally, like he forgets Jeffrey Epstein's name. He forgets the age of Aaliyah and R. Kelly when she was literally traumatized. She says in interviews that it is, so, it, the situation was so upsetting. She can, she will never, she never talked about it. Like, it's like he, in his mind, is trying to minimize how bad these situations are and saw her pictures of her with her mom and dad which means her parents were very much involved in her life and that right there would have been the danger zone she comes over we she goes home her mom and dad press her he's like i f this old man and next thing you know mom and dad call the police the police knocking at your door that's how that goes down so i never put myself in the crosshairs of the danger zone we Except you just told us a story about how you screwed a, a mother and then you screwed her daughters on her request. When you stick your dick in some pussy, they ain't never had a dick in it before. Woo! It's so tight. It's so warm. It's so snug. This is why I have a problem with the predator label. Because they were willing participants in the dynamic. No, they weren't. If your parent is making you do it, you are not a willing participant. Did you act like, yo. R. Kelly was having other people find and vet girls for him. And that's when it got out of control. This is the reason that I never got caught because I never brought any... The fact that he's saying, I never got caught, you know that you're doing something wrong. If what, if what you're doing, if you refer to it as never getting caught, bruh, you know that what you're doing is wrong. What is wrong with you? What do you mean you never got caught? You're calling it a circus. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is why you can't play stupid. People want to play dumb. 
people want to like when people know they're saying some f when people know they're saying some bs they want to play dumb but you can hear in their language that they know exactly what they're doing and they know exactly what they're talking about if you wasn't doing nothing wrong you wouldn't call it a circus and you wouldn't say you didn't get caught You are. Even though I have a similar appetite to R. Kelly, I like young women. I ain't ashamed of that at all. She was willing. She okay, wanted good for it. You. And here we come to R. Kelly. And I'm going to try to explain this appetite to you guys who don't have this appetite. Why do you... No. Why? No. If you have an appetite that... It's not just illegal, but in general, we view it as morally wrong. We view it as very detrimental to your development. We view it as you're taking advantage of somebody who doesn't have the legal right to speak for themselves. Like they literally do not have the legal right to consent to what you're doing to them. Um, why do we need an explanation? Clip number two. Got so huge that the FBI called me in. You know what I'm going to tell them? It never happened. And I'm just going to sit there and look at them. So you lying. Because see, I've been seeing all these comments. Someone's going to come forward. Someone's going to come forward. Really? Who's coming forward? I meant to film this yesterday, but... Yeah, that's... I'm sure R. Kelly felt the same way. Who's coming forward? It's very scary to come forward when the person you're coming forward about is richer and more powerful than you and has and is playing psychological warfare on you. When society has will put a target on your back. Damn, look at the victim. Look at... Nicki Minaj's husband's victim and the target that's on her back. Like people don't want to go through that. People might be more willing to go through it when, when they know they're not going to go through it alone. So when 30 women come out against Bill Cosby, 50 women come out against R. Kelly, however many hundred women come out against Jeffrey Epps, like when a mass of women come out, how many 20 boys came out against James Charles? When a mass comes out, you feel safer in numbers. But if it's just you by yourself going against someone more powerful, you're not going to, that is a scary thing. It takes a very, very brave type of person. And if the people who should be coming out are 14, 15, not even legal, they're not going to come out, bro. That is this. This is so disgusting. Internet on Beyonce's internet. And then he posted that video yesterday. And was like, oh, who's going to come forward? Who's going to come forward? That is terrifying. That video is so scary. Because that is exactly how grooming happened. The way he's so confident in thinking that no one will come forward. These girls were groomed. They probably think this shit is okay. This man is taunting people on the internet. Like, oh, well, who's going to come forward? Oh, you don't have no evidence. You confess. And then the fact, the fact that you go after little girls whose parents aren't in their lives, so you, because you know what you're doing is wrong. Stop hoarding me, a YouTuber. YouTubers are known to do stuff like this. So that makes it okay. okay. That makes it legal. Yeah. What? Do no, we not no. Predators are known to do this, and. Predators are also known to have the drive to put themselves in a position where they can predator in peace. What this 
does you being a YouTuber have to do with you being a pet? This is the longest video I've ever made because this man literally disgusts me. Like, it's disgusting. And then not to mention some of the comments under that video are disgusting. Like, look at these comments, bro. You can pause to read them, but like, look at these comments. And this is why when somebody asks me, what do you think of the manosphere? Because whenever, whenever I make any video about being a woman, being a black woman, my view on relationships, interracial dating, whenever I make any type of content about that, I get these weirdo guys. Uh, like I even have to, I have to watch what I say because there's certain trigger words for some of the, like legit incels will come. I don't know. It's like they have a radar on black woman speaking about her personal relationships. And there are certain things that you'll say, like if I were to say I'm a, I'm a independent woman. That's that, that's a trigger word. And, and if you're a regular person, you might be like, what's wrong with being an independent woman? Right? Because if you're an adult, you would hope that adult is independent. Like regular people, there's nothing wrong with that. But for these dudes, when they hear independent woman, it triggers something in them. They get so mad. They start calling you all kinds of B words and uh, N words like, and I feel like that kind of stuff is fueled in the manosphere. I'm not, I'm not saying the manosphere is, I, I can't go as far as to say the manosphere is toxic. Cause I don't know. I'm not in the manosphere. Like I'm not, I'm not paying attention too much. I see a, a few things in the manosphere. I talk to dudes who are into manosphere and they're regular dudes I mostly interact with very regular dudes when discussing manosphere or I speak to dudes in the manosphere, but what makes headlines are nasty MFers like this dude. This nasty ish is what makes headlines from the manosphere. And you will see that there are croonies and flunkies who are agreeing with it. So it's like, what the, what is, what is actually going on? And I want to talk about those things today. We kind of talked about some of these Let's things talk before about it, in, girl. De like in I'm detail, here. detail, detail about some of these things. And I'll link those, some of those videos up in the iCards up above. Mm. Go ahead and start with point number one. Predatory behavior is pretty much normalized. Philia is normalized. If yeah. hemophilia is normalized, especially here within the United States. Oh my God. The point where it's like it is so normalized. It is, um, we're having... Grown adults playing high schoolers, all these movies about high school and teenage teenagers having actual relations, all these TV shows. Um, we have these apps where doing actualized movements is normalized. And what do kids do? Kids are on these apps because what, what do they do? They just go to school. They don't have bills to pay and stuff. They're on these apps and they're doing these actualized movements and they're getting praise for it. I mean, the, in the modeling world, the younger you look, the babier your face and the more boyish your figure, the, the, you, the more gigs you get. I mean, I totally get what she's saying. It's okay and acceptable. In a lot of other countries, especially within developing countries, it's pretty much normal. It, it triggers my thoughts of which there were some people who used to de who have DM'd me like months upon months ago who are outside of the US and are within some developing countries and they've literally told me their experiences like they'll go through sexual abuse or have been before by older men within these developing countries. And there's really nothing that can be done because the authorities do not care, the law does not care, and a lot of people within the law Oh yeah, there's so many countries. I mean, I, um, when I travel outside the United States, I pay attention to when I see, like I feel so like, oh my God, whenever I see, whenever I go to a country and they have public service announcements about how to check for warning signs of X trafficking. Um, like there's just all these public announcements about um, if, you know, reminder, Anyone under the age of 16 legally cannot be married to, it's like, no, like I'm, <laughs> I'm not even joking. There are some places in this world that the banners everywhere are 
reminders to not be a <laughs> a pedophile or a hebophile. Oop, I said the word. I hope YouTube don't whatever. This is a very serious topic. So if we get demonetized, we get demonetized. But th there are places where they have to like remind citizens that doing stuff with people who are of a certain age, it's not okay. And if you see it, you sh it should be reported. And if there are ways to tell if somebody's trying to hide what's really going on. Law are the ones, the main ones taking advantage of these girls. There's nothing being done by the adults in these situations. It's normalized in things such as the church. The Catholic church was literally just caught. Girl. Again, mm. in which I'm not really surprised. For abusing kids. Oh, it's normalized Lord. in the law. And it's there protected. are a lot of high figures and people. And you know what blew my mind? I was, there's this FBI reporter. He, and he does stuff on like the deep web and stuff. And he was talking about how. Um, he realized that many of the people who go on the deep web for very sordid stuff, dealing with young, young people, he says so many of them are like authority figures, politicians, police officers, like p these people in authority and they protect each other. They, pr they want to protect the predator, not you, you know, not you, mama, daddy, not you who have to raise your child in these environments that you think they want to protect you and your child. No, the establishment wants to protect the predator who is pretending and putting on a wolf mask or it's a wolf in sheep's clothing type of deal. In the law who are in like high positions and high power. Girl, who are yo, listen to this next story. <sighs> This is why I don't understand how people whose job it is to protect, they're not given adequate education. Um, like the Gabby Petito case where the police officer couldn't read the obvious signs that Gabby was in an abusive relationship. But listen to this story she's going to tell. This is heartbreaking, but this actually is very normal for children in this situation. Going through Instagram and this post came up and I really want to read this out to y'all. I want y'all to listen to this. I had a seven year old client removed from his home for abusing his two year old brother. Stay with me. He was placed in a residential treatment facility in Virginia where I worked as a residential counselor. He's been in the facility for one year, three months before I got him. He had four counselors before his file landed on my desk. When a counselor doesn't make progress within a certain time frame, they pass the resident on to another counselor to make progress. It's a terrible process. For three months, one hour every Monday, Tuesday and Friday, we sat in silence. They wanted to remove him from my caseload. I really had to demand for him to remain on my caseload. They gave me three more month extension. And one day he asked who his next counselor. I said it will always be me if you want. He went back silent for the remainder of his session. The next session he finally spoke to me about something random. He started asking me questions which I answered for him. The next session he allowed me to ask him some questions. My questions had nothing to do with the reason why he was in the facility because we both know why he's here. We established a great relationship that eventually tapped into why he was here but things didn't start to make sense to me. I just felt something was extremely wrong. I asked him for the first time if he has ever been touched inappropriately and to my surprise he said yes. After seven months of counseling it made sense. He stuffed two double A batteries in his brothers because he wanted to block his stepfather from doing exactly the same thing to his brother he was doing to him tears literally fell from my eyes from what this now eight is telling me none of this was in his file he said he told his brother in his first case worker everything else was there but what he said after this revelations i gave it to my boss who took legal action the kid was eventually released into foster care he ended up in a good home the mother said she didn't believe her son and thought he just didn't like the new father they're still together this case will always stay with me because for the child to think let me block my brother's a so he can't stick his inside my little brother is very ugh. This literally also made me sit here and think about how oh my mother never let me personally go anywhere when I was younger because she didn't want me to face some of the experiences that she has faced with sexual abuse. She didn't want anything happening to me so she tried at all costs to protect me to the best of her ability. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is hypersexual we'll just say the words hypersexualization in young in a young person that's a trauma response. So when that guy is saying, oh, that earlier, he was saying that girl's a freak to this day. That's, that's not a good thing. She's, she, she didn't choose that. Her mother and you made her that.
responsibility. Same thing with my brother. So we really didn't go anywhere or do anything. We really didn't have anybody that close to us that would do something like that to us. At first when I was younger, I didn't understand why she was like, like that. I was really irritated because I just wanted to hang out with friends. But now that I'm older and I'm looking back on it, I can understand and see why she was that way because going through sexual abuse is a very traumatic experience. And I know that now. Yeah, um, also it made me think of um, the, even in the ex-worker world, you know, SE ex-worker world, these days I feel like it's getting much better. Um, you can do a lot more stuff digitally. M more people have access to do their work digitally and have more control, which is fantastic. But like people who enter that world you can you can enter that world you could totally love it but i found that when you enter that world it's like you encounter things you weren't prepared for like maybe you thought sure i i love i love sucking some pain <laughs> like i love it i'd love to get paid for it and then you don't realize you'll also be pushed and coerced maybe even threaten to do other things that you're just thinking that wasn't in the job description. <laughs> and, um, and you just, you have to go along with it. And to the world, they'll read it as, oh, she a freak. She'll do anything. She a freak. But actually she's not. She she was just trying to have a certain type of career and make money and didn't know everything that was a part of that. Mia Khalifa is, her story is like, it's very common. She's going through therapy because her career that was both applauded but also not applauded like, like how that man spoke earlier, how she's a freak. He said, like, that's a good thing, but it's not a good thing because if you're trying to apply for a job and your boss knows you're Mia Khalifa, you probably aren't getting hired. It's, it's real. it's really crazy. Like there's a mental game to this, to this sex stuff. And people don't talk about it, especially not the manosphere. They don't talk about it. It's, I just, it, it makes me very annoyed when we're talking about actual trauma and I'm just hearing about somebody talk about it from the perspective of they got their D wet. And dude, like that enrages me. It enrages me. It's such a multifaceted, multi-layered thing that's very common and needs to be spoken about more. But all you can think about is how awesome it was to get your D wet. Like, do you care about human beings? Like, do you... Do you care about humans? This is also part of the reason why I feel like Lyndon was perfectly fine and comfortable with saying it never happened. Who's coming for? Not necessarily with that scenario I just named. It's just within our society, predators are protected more than children are protected. Mm -hmm. It's with the law and or because you are a person of a high status or a person with money or a high position that you feel like you would be able to get away with something like this. Sadly, in some cases, because of some people's position status how much money they have they're able to get away with these things in this lifetime for example yeah. look at our killers it's people we come across on a day-to-day -day basis they just Girl. start saying it out loud like Lyndon did and this especially happens in the manosphere whether they be with the people who watch manosphere content not saying all men in the manosphere act like this or think like this and not saying all coaches within the manosphere act or think like this but it's still a good bit of men within the manosphere period by the way if you're curious like what's the manosphere I'm still trying to really understand what it is myself, but it's, I mean, you can tell what it is. It's like when it's, when you can, when you see content that 
it gives the vibe it's by men for men. Like Joe Rogan. I think Joe, Ro- Joe Rogan is in the manosphere. He, he is a man whose audience is other men. And a lot of a lot of content in the manosphere relates to dating. Um, there is money stuff, like how to make more money, stuff like that. Um, there's like b- body hacking, like Tim Ferriss. I consider him as somebody in the manosphere, even though he doesn't really talk about dating. He talks about like, I don't know, how to never have to sleep again for three months straight. I don't know. But... What you will see a lot is just dating stuff in the manosphere. And that's where we hear a lot of stupid stuff. Like this guy. And it's not like it's not uncommon to hear like dumb rhetoric in the manosphere. It's not uncommon. And then some guys will say, well, this guy is extreme. I don't think he's extreme. Like, I have been listening and watching Manosphere type content since I was 16 years old. You, d- It's not like, no, you're not just going to enter the manosphere and hear stuff like this right off the bat, but you will, if you stay in the manosphere, you will see that stuff. It's kind of like if you watch prawn, P O R N. If you watch, if you go on those websites, the first thing you see on those websites, is not going to be underage stuff or revenge stuff. But if you stay on the website, you will see it. If you, that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Get who do think and act like this. Cause I know it's a manosphere men who watch me. Some of those people that some of y'all idolize think exactly like Glendon and have the same appetites as Glendon. The thing is- Yo, maybe that contributes to it. What I just mentioned, like how I said, if you're on the prawns websites, if you stay on it, you will see some some messed up stuff. I mean, shoot, that one dude went and bang banged um, massage parlors because he watched that type of prawn. Like, yo, like, I've also seen there's some I don't know what you call it. Uh, There's this movement of anti-prawn. People who are anti-prawn, and it's not like a Christian thing. It's it's like a it's a women thing, but there's also dudes too. There are men who are anti-prawn as well for like personal development. But there's women who are anti-prawn, and and I to I totally get why. I totally get why. I totally get why. Like. There's enough studies to show how prawn, especially today's type, can really mess with your mind. Those coaches are just protected and defended by their watchers. I know y'all could, let's go look at these comments really quick. I saw the live stream, Linden, and I'm just here to say I rock with you, man. Both TLA and Anton Daniel simply had a bias towards you. And when these guys don't live in the real world, they live in an artificial fake world where they don't see how things really are. It's really a man's dream. Sleep with as many hot chicks as possible. Those who's were just capping your content has helped me big time. And I think you're a dope person, man. Yep. Disgusting. Another. Yeah, exactly. We don't care about other human beings. It's very much like if you hang out with salespeople and, you know, you'll have salespeople who, who they're like, yeah, it's my job to help my prospects make a decision that's good for them. It's my job to help them make a decision, right? Like you'll meet good salespeople and then you'll meet Salespeople who they don't care. They don't care about humans. They just care about got another commission. Like that's how these dudes see sex. Like they it's like they don't even see it as as part of the human condition. They literally just see it as how do I get my D wet? 
I don't know, like, why haven't you matured? Or why, why are you, like, I would expect that of like a 13 year old. I wouldn't expect that of a grown man. I don't know. That's just, I don't know. Top figures within the manosphere were to come out and say some of the stuff that Glendon had said. Or yes, there will be some people who were like, "Yo, dude, this is gross." But there will also be on the other end a still good chunk of people who would still support them and be on their side because they idolize these coaches and idolize yeah. these teachers. And a lot of these watchers don't see this type of behavior or what Glendon said as a problem because they would do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. Say, for they example, you can go and look under my red pill video. If they had, that's the thing. They wish they had. They wish they had the opportunity to take advantage of people that way. And I came from a work environment where people were attracted to work there because they have that in them. Like the narcissistic, the narcissist boss I had, he saw people as dollar signs, and he thrived on the idea of being able to take advantage of people. If if he had somebody who was giving their last dime to buy his product and they're like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pay rent tomorrow, but you got him to pay his last time, he would brag about it. <laughs> he would use it as a story to brag about. And that attracts people who wish they could be in a position where they can take advantage of somebody like that. Like it begets, it begets itself. So she's going to show another example of how some dudes in the manosphere talk. There's this talk of the wall. I hate it. Um, I don't fully understand what it is, but it just seems like a very stupid concept to me. I'm going to show the video real quick. So right now we are talking about the wall and the age that most women hit the wall. Now, for me personally, I choose not to date women over 30 years old. For me, that is the wall for most women. Most women actually begin to actually lose their looks. Because he's saying it's about looks, I don't think you're dating these women. I think you just mean you choose to have relations with women under 30. Like, I don't, why are they using a euphemism date? Like, just say what it is. You're not dating these women. You're not trying to marry, you're not trying to build a life with these women or marry them or have a long-term relationship with them. You can't because once she hits 30, she's no longer dateable for you. <laughs> like, just say, like, say what it is. You are talking about merely having relations. In their mid-20s. Some as young as 25, depending on how well or how piss poor. So that's why it's like, so it's not even about attractiveness. There are women who are attractive at a variety of ages. You want somebody who looks like a baby. You want somebody with a baby face, which our society pedalizes. Our society idolizes the youthful female baby face. And you want to screw somebody who has it. And when she no longer looks like a baby, when she looks like an adult, now you no longer want her. Like, this is a certain type of philia. Poorly, they've taken care of themselves, their diet, uh, how much they drink, how often they smoke. Okay, all these factors are going to come into play. So some, some women will actually hit the wall before 30. A woman's prime really is her late teens and early 20s. Okay, that is a woman. Prime for what though? What do you mean prime for what? Women's prime, uh, generally from the age of 18 to 23. He said 18 because that's when you're legally an adult. Well, I wish you would tell the truth. What's the real age? No, I think he's talking about how young, how young, <laughs> how young you can get with a woman without going to jail before she starts looking like she's actually an adult. That is typically a woman's prime for me. I've only seen like a small amount. And now that's like prime for what? 
yo, I wish these dudes, that's the other thing about these dudes. When they start talking like this, they, they're not truthful. Say what the hell you're actually talking about. Because now I have to deal with stupid, stupid little freaking 19 year olds trying to educate me on, on dating life. Talking about, well, you're going to hit the wall. Okay, so young, youngin, young son. What's the, f- what's the wall, bruh? Tell me, what's, what, what's the wall? What's your end game? To get as much P as possible. Okay, good for you, bruh. Else that really doesn't help, but they also end up saying as well. Because they were willing participants in the dynamic. They wanted it. They came to me. They wanted to have they say it as if it's something to be proud of. Those teenagers, those 17, 18, and 19 year olds, teenagers, those are teens, only go towards you and want to use you because of your money. They don't want to actually have a relationship with you because I guarantee you they're going towards you and using you for your And the thing is, the dude doesn't want a relationship with them either. So he thinks because he understands there's no love here, just because he understands it, he thinks that teenager understands it. You know, kids do dumb things all the time that they don't understand what they're doing until an adult who cares about them lets them know, hey, did you know when you do X, Y, Z, maybe it's because of ABC? You know what I mean? Like the teenager doesn't realize I'm using him for his money. The teenager just sees, oh, I can live it up without my parents. But you, a grown person, you know what's going on, you know what's up, and you know there's no love, and you think the teenager is coming at it with the same level of understanding and maturity as you. You a clown. Your money and finding some- And how are you going to complain about it? You're taking advantage of the situation. How are you going to complain about it? Somebody in their age range to actually sleep around with it, be in a relationship with it. We're being completely and utterly honest here. I'm playing. And the thing is, they say it like it's something to be proud of when it's not. And I'm not saying this to say it's okay for those girls to use a person or for anybody, period, to use anybody for their money. Like, that's like, it's not okay. Sure as heck, not about to sit here and act like y'all don't sit out and put your money out towards younger girls to bring them in anyway. Because that's what y'all do. Y'all know what you're doing. But also, sleeping and being exactly in your 40s and 50s and sleeping with 17 and 18 and 19 year olds. They know what they're doing because that's what they want. So they'll act like, oh, well, she's using me, but you are fishing like you were using your money as bait to get what you want get your d wet and go home and leave her however however you found her which unfortunately sometimes you found her by way of her mama or in r kelly's case daddies bringing the girl to you it's a disgusting enterprise, yo, and uh, this video is going on really long, but I just had to share this, you know, I just had to share my thoughts on this because it was very disgusting. It was just, and I made a commitment to myself that, at least on my channel, every time something makes my jaw drop, I make a video on it. So I had, I, this was gross. Um, I'm upset. It took me five days to see her video from when she posted it. I, I wish I'd seen it sooner. This is because more people need to speak on this. You know, I'm not coming here with all the, with all the receipts and stuff. But if you go to that guy's channel, you will see him still bragging about it. He said, he posted in his community tab. YouTube, I didn't take my video down. YouTube took my video down. I was wondering when it was going to happen. Hmm. And then he said, oh, P I keep getting messages like this. And he put a screenshot of some some young chick posting like a selfie, sending a selfie like, am I your type? And sending a picture of her like, you know, like oversized shirt. Am I your type? Let's meet up. And... I don't know what he's trying to insinuate. I don't know if he's saying uh, people are tro people are trolling him or trying to get him busted, <laughs> like trying to get him to respond, to get him in trouble, or if he's trying to say like this is just a norm for him. He just gets girls sending him stuff like that. I don't know what he's trying to say, 
But, um, like, there are men who feel how this dude feels. They feel like people like R. Kelly did nothing wrong. And they feel like it's their birthright and they're entitled to to have this type of behavior. And that is n- n- nothing bad is happening here. Nothing wrong is happening. Everything is above the belt, of the, above the board. And... What makes it so dumb is that they know they're lying. Like, they know what they're doing is wrong. Like, they, even they know what they're doing is wrong. So, I just want to share my thoughts. If you want to see the full video, check out Mosef Mire. Check her out. Um, this is not going to get... This is not going to get a lot of, you know, play. But... The closest situation we have to this might be James Charles. And some people are like, why? Some people are really defending James Charles. This is why we are coming hard on James Charles. This is why. Because this is the same. The mentality this nasty dude has is the same mentality James Charles has. It's the same mentality. It's the same type of situation going on. And this guy justified it by saying, this is what YouTubers do. No, because I'm a YouTuber. I don't do, I don't do this. There are plenty of YouTubers who are more successful than even this guy who don't do this. Just because you see James Charles and Keemstar doing this stuff and face banks just because you see these dudes doing that that doesn't make it okay like what i had to share this this was so disgusting (sighs) but if you stay to the end with me please put paw prints in the comments so we know you part of gang gang um i would love to hear your thoughts if you have any ciao this is the kind of thing that if I like, even when I watch this video, I, I can't even come. Like, there's some things that are just so crazy that I, I cannot even comment. Like, I have no words. I have no words. It's even weird to have words because I am now trying to intellectualize a visceral, guttural disgust that I felt and now I'm trying to intellectualize it and you can't feel what I'm feeling like my words can't even convey what that's making me literally feel like here like I'm having a bodily response I had a body response it's messed up (sighs) so if you vibe with me and my the way my brain works Hit the subscribe button. We'd love to see you around here. Until next time. Yo, I'm still trying to keep it. (laughs) Mm, Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.